Loaded score. Does he sit second, man? No, I don't think he does. I think Kevin Keegan probably sits second. Oh, God, what a <laughs> scandal. Austin Eckler versus the cards. Go and fuck the yeah. lot of you. <laughs> Austin Eckler. You make me like I'm some sort of cameo. Like I've come in and go, and <laughs> out the bag, England to win. 42 of Loaded Sport, where today we are going to be previewing the weekend's action with a complete change of format to Loaded Sport and the way we are doing things moving forward, including the welcoming back of the first person I'm going to introduce. Hey, Joe, man. <laughs> hey, how are we doing, I'm boys? Right. Welcome right. back, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Sorry, I jumped in there. Your voice is that weak. I, uh, I thought you'd petered off already. But uh, I, I, you doing more importantly, mate. You, uh, you sound a bit rough tonight. I am, mate. My throat's absolutely killing me, but I'm here to battle through, as we do. And, New uh, format sounds like Adam's been throat fucked by a cactus. Mm. <laughs> That's what we planned, wasn't it? At some point, this was going to happen. Well, That's the new loaded sport is, format, everyone. This Welcome. is the way we wanted to go for. Uh, but yes, of course, you can see us now on the screen. So, Kim, uh, Skin, Sam, how are you all doing? Good, mate. Good. Good. Mr. Dawson, I'm, Mr. White, man with the mic. Let's crack on. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Love that. With the uh, change of format, we are going to do things slightly differently. We're going to kick things off with the lock of the week, including the listener lock-in. And, uh, Carl, you're going to be the third person, uh, 13th person, should I say, to take part in this. So uh, welcome, first of all, to Loaded Sport. Thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's good to have you with us. So with the uh, score at the moment, the highest score being three, some of the selections you've picked, are you confident in them? Some more than others. <laughs> Classic. Okay, so uh, first of all, then just tell us a bit about the team you support and why. Um, big Forest fan. Mm. Ooh, remember them play up? Controversial. <laughs> um, yeah, remember them. I'm remember what them. Derby shit, especially to that. <laughs> he has a team blessing. Well, who's you know. on? Who's on? Carl B, sorted. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I put this on. I thought Sheffield United <laughs> fan, Derby fan. It's got to be done, hasn't it? Yeah, but why the... not? You bastard. Yeah. Oh, we'll be in the FA Cup <laughs> semi-final, can we? <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're probably swap places with you this year. But, uh, oh, yeah, the, <laughs> been a Forest fan since I was a kid. Uh, my granddad got me into it. My uncle used to take me to the games. He used to take me to Chesterfield a lot as well. Um, so we went around supporting <clears throat> Chesterfield and Forest, which was a bit of a a bit of a, a mishmash. One Derbyshire, mm. one Nuts. Nuts, but uh, yeah, he took me to Wembley two or three times. So the yeah, you'll get there, mate. Don't worry. And uh, there, in, there in a couple of weeks, mate. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, you get one every now and then, don't you? But, uh, yeah, we, we always lose. But yeah, yeah, we we know the feeling. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically it. Once, once you've chosen, you can't go back, can you? No, not at all. Um, so with the uh, the top score of three, we're going to kick things off with your starting with the team, the team that you're most confident is going to get a win this weekend. With, of course, us now recording once a week, we are allowing the inclusion of Monday's fixtures. Monday. 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 Here we Monday's go, Monday. fixtures are included. Here we go, Monday. Here we go, Monday. It's not controversial. Um, I've gone for Arsenal to beat Leeds. Oh, uh, yeah, I can cross that one straight off. Yeah. That, it might be closer than the bookies think, but uh, Arsenal should have too much room, I think. Out of my lot, mate, that. You've, uh, you've took that straight off me. Number I one think... pick, yeah? Mm. Number one. Yeah, right. I've got that as number one as well. We've got a nice Ooh. little backup set, though, so hopefully it'll come to me first. So, Skin, you're going to do the wheel for us this time, aren't you? No, mate, if you the wheel. Uh, check your messages, I said you prep it, mate, because it oh. won't work. <clears throat> Excellent. So, welcome to uh, Organisation 101. Don't peek behind the curtain. Loaded! <laughs> <so hard. laughs> Just, uh, Carl B, while, while uh, Aggie gets that sorted you've gone with Arsenal there we're going to get into the bottom half of the table shortly with the score predictions but Arsenal Man City what's your thoughts on Arsenal's season so far and and do you think they've got enough to win the title or will City prove too strong come the uh, 38th game I honestly think that I'm probably in the majority where I think that Arsenal have had a great season an unexpected season but I do think City will reel them in they've got to play each other yet and I, yeah. I fully expect City to sort them out. Um, but having said that, every time I think Arsenal have blown it, they uh, they come up with the goods. And that's not an Arsenal mentality that many of us are used to. No. Um, especially since the glory years under Wenger. So uh, don't get me wrong, I hope Arsenal do it. 
But uh, I, do, I do think City will reel them in. <clears throat> Me and Kemp have been backwards and forwards on this for the majority of the season since probably just before. It was just after World Cup, actually, weren't it? And, yeah. Um, that's yeah, I've not been involved at all. Yeah, well... Oh, quite ironically, now. Dawson's been backwards and forwards with himself on this situation as well. <laughs> yeah, I, was, yeah. I was going to bring you in, mate. I was going to bring you in, <laughs> but, uh, but you've jumped the gun. So, yes, just as the league started to take shape just after Christmas, uh, me and Kemp have been at Logredge, really. I've been quite confident in saying Arsenal, I do still fancy him. I mean, it can, I remember him saying, come back towards the end of March, April, we'll see what the league's looking like then. Well, all of a sudden, we're at uh, we're at that time period now, and there's still a good eight point gap. Granted, they've uh, they've got a game in hand, but it's got to be sniffed out at this point in the in the season. I don't think. I'd love to sniff your gooch. <laughs> of course, right. So I've done the wheel. Let's move on to uh, the our locks. Um, the first name out was Ken. Oh, for fuck. oh, he's due oh. one. To be fair. <laughs> I must admit, I, I don't think mine is gonna um, is gonna be that controversial. I don't think many people will have it, to be honest with you, because you are a lot of the time Premier League heavy, apart from when it comes to Notts County and Wrexham. Not uh, me, so thank you. I'm not I'm sure about that, and I am sure either. <laughs> I'm certainly sure not. That? Are you sure about that, Adam? Me, yeah. Mate, anytime you can take City or Notts County, you're on it like a rat up a drain pipe. What's right, so I am going with Barnsley at home that against Morecambe. Barnsley have, have upset me in, in recent years, uh, but this this time they're in very good form, um, beating Wednesday in recent times, beating Plymouth, who are the, both the top two teams in that division. They're sitting fourth, but like I say, they're in fantastic form, and Morecambe are down in 22nd with only seven wins to their name this season. So I have gone for Barnsley at Oakwell to beat Morecambe. Like it. That was random one pick that, so uh, got back up, so we're all good. Uh, up next on the wheel was myself, which means I can go for my second choice, which is Sheffield Wednesday to beat oh, Lincoln. Oh, my God. Hey, only two picks I've done. I'm scrambling now. <laughs> Get scrambling quick. Um, four games without a win, but they're still there within a shout of getting automatic promotion into the championship. I think they're going to be the side that gets there in the end. I think it's just a matter of time, isn't it? And it's the Lincoln side that's struggling. I'm back in Wednesday. And I just very, very quickly add on to the end of what you just said there. And it sounds like you're very, very confident in Sheffield Wednesday getting the win against Lincoln. Well, yeah, Sheffield I, Wednesday I expect you to say something. Sheffield Wednesday have been in very, very bad form these last few weeks. Mm-hmm. And my dad actually went in the Forest Green end against Sheffield Wednesday because he, he hates Wednesday that much, bless him. Um, and it looked as though Wednesday were never going to score if they played till next week. Uh, and Forest Green absolutely outplayed them, and I believe Forest Green are bottom of the league. So, yes, what what are your thoughts on on that, Adam? Are you sure it's are you sure it's a lock, or is that a little bit risky? No, mate, I still think it's a lock. I think we've played football manager enough now now to know that when you've had a good spell of form, you have a couple of games off. Wednesday, four games without a win, they're still good enough to get themselves back up there. They do a cut up their ass. <laughs> And with you getting Chesterfield in the Championship, football manager is a very reliable point of reference. So, mate, it is hundred percent. It just shows how good I am at managing. Mm, better, better than that than speaking. Anyway, let's carry on. I am mate at the minute. The boys are <laughs> right up next on the wheel um, is Skin. Oh, Sam, I'm quite uh, glad about it, mate. I'm still scrambling. Okay, well, <laughs> I think I, I think I'm going to let you off and. The the second choice I've got, I think, is the team you'll ultimately go for. But I'm going to go for Peter Brewer. Peter Borough in League One at home to Oxford United. Peter Borough in fantastic form, beat Derby last weekend and they're absolutely flying at the minute. So, uh, yeah, I'll take them. Okay, so, uh, Sam, welcome back. Your first lock since you return. First lock since I've returned. Are we able to pick Friday picks? Yeah. So, I think I'm going to go with Burnley at home against Sunderland and I can see that being a potential banana skin but it's purely down to the fact that I don't feel like I've had a lot of time. Sunderland, to be fair, looking, they've only won one in the last five in the league, so I think they've dropped off a bit, haven't they? So I'm going to back, uh, I'm going to back Burnley at home on the Friday night, under the lights. Fair. Nice. OK, so on to the goal scorers then. So, Carl, a goal scorer from any game this weekend that you are confident is going to uh, bag? Well, because I think Arsenal will sort out Leeds. Um Arsenal, they don't really have an out and out score, do they? They just share it around quite a lot. But uh, I got Saka. Just oh, I can't believe you. I can't believe you. 
He's picked well, me. Arsenal pick and care. Miss Saka yeah. pick. He's done both. He's gone for the Gempy special. Shit. He's uh, fucking not loving the boy player. You know, he's just got a little cute face. You just want to stroke him. He's, yeah, yeah. he's a beautiful oh, He's absolutely man. phenomenal, isn't he? He's, he's, he's come on so much this season, especially. Like that goal, even last weekend for England against Ukraine, I know it was oh, a really the cool role game. was beautiful and then the finish, yeah, yeah, top draw. It, it's been integral to uh, Arsenal's title chase this season, and only 21, as you said last weekend, is so scary where he's going to be in the next two, three years, where he's just consistently he's, he's going to be one of the best wingers in the world, like outright European Championship winner with England. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't be so silly, already got the tattoo. <laughs> nice, big fan of that. Right, so in the uh, snake format, Sam, you're up first for your goal scorer. Uh, well, Saka was my first choice, and I was <laughs> that confident no one had gone for me. I didn't even plan for a backup, so that's uh, <laughs> left me where I got my face there. Um, I'm just going to have to go for default, aren't I? It's a uh, it's a big game in the Prem coming up on Kemp's, Saturday Kemp's afternoon. He's going for what I think he's going for. This is a risk. So I know what you're going to say about Erling Haaland, and I know he didn't he missed training. <laughs> I've seen that. Um, you're not going to Haaland again, are you? Again, I've, I've been on for the last six weeks. No, but for the five weeks before you're break, mate. You're picking Haaland. I'm going Haaland, mate. I'm go- this is purely down to the Ooh. fact that I ain't had a backup and Corby took Saka, so I'm going deep by default. I select Haaland. That pick is prime Gary Neville. Ooh. Ooh. We need to put the sign clip there, don't we, and play it yeah. whenever something's risky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, is that me next then, Aggie? It is you next. I will go for the second loaded sport classic behind Macaulay Langstaff and take Paul Mullin for Wrexham at home to Oldham. Sorry, Aggie. You not took mine, mate. You're absolutely fine. I All right, you bounced out of your chair. No, just finding it funny that we're going for the players that Kemp had said that we're going for and then argued that we don't. I and never argued like about you. to drop uh, my way by old blue eyes with my absolutely crooner is the word. <laughs> right, so... drop, drop my way and then drop your pants. <laughs> no, mate, I'm all right. I'll pass on this one. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go with Chaplin from Ipswich, who has scored 16 goals this season, and he is up against, against my boys, Derby <laughs> County. So I think Derby um, County. That's a good shout. Um, although in saying the same thing, I think I went for Clark Harris against Derby last week. Yeah, he week. did. I, I just about to say that. Oh, he's got a new thing, has he? It's like he did with yeah. Packers running back. Back away yes. yeah. Packers are playing. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, mate, you, you do right, actually, because Derby are shit a minute. Their form's gone completely out window. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Chaplin bagged a couple, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, so, Ken, over to you for your scorer. Yeah. I'm going to go with the from the same game as uh, as Sam's going, but not quite as risky. Ooh. I don't think uh, there's going to be Alvarez. lots and lots of goals. They usually nope. There's going to be lots and lots of goals. There usually is in a City Liverpool game, or there is there has been in the past in City Liverpool games. I'm going for Riyad Mahrez to score Ooh. for Manchester Ooh. City. I like it against Liverpool. I like it. I respect it. Don't do that so much now. It's a good shout. So, on to the wild card. So, Carl, anybody who, as long as the bookies have them as the uh, underdog, you can go for them. So, who is your wild card? Okay. It's, uh, it's a bit dodgy. You want the wild card. Uh, for Fleetwood to beat Exeter. Um, Fleetwood won the last two. They've only lost two in the last 10 games. Um, a good result against Derby. Really enjoyed that one. <laughs> um, their only defeats in their last 10 came at, uh, at Wickham and, and Cheltenham and they've picked up a bit recently um, I know Exeter are on a good run as well so there's definitely goals in it but so considering that they're not the bookies uh, favourite in that game I think Fleetwood uh, represent a bit of value for money Why not? Solid as fuck So Kemp who is your wild card? I am picking with my heart this week on a wild card, and I don't usually do that, but I'm doing that this week. I'm going for the 7-4 to four Sheffield United against the 6-4 to four Norwich City. Uh, Sheffield United away at Norwich. We, we do, we do. I've been down to Norwich with, with United a few times, and we've played pretty well when we've been down there before, so it must be something in Delia's cooking. So I'm going <laughs> for Sheffield United away at Norwich. Nice. Um, I've been stuck between two, but I'm going to go with Fulham to win. You fucking cunt! <laughs> Holy shit. It's literally the only one I've got. 
Jesus Christ. Fulham to win special. away against Bournemouth. It's very close between the two as well, according to uh, 365. Yeah, oh. I'm on bet 365 right now. I'm about to tell you what my pick is. And I've got it up just for the same reason as you, because I'll probably need to justify it. Is it me next or not? I know it's skin next. Oh, it's me, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what. It's nine and a half thousand pounds. I ain't got a fucking pick because <laughs> I, I only picked Fulham. You know what? At the time, I thought that's a bit fucking tough. That someone, someone will probably take that. There's a uh, similar fixture to that in the Premier League that I very nearly went for. Don't to leapfrog you. Yeah, yeah go on. Then. If you've, if you've got one, ready, I've yeah. got one ready, and I'm going to take it. And it's uh, seen as his ear. I'm back in Corby's Forest in the hope. That the jinx continues and I jinx the back. <laughs> You'll say the incorrect 19, result. Yeah, against Wolves at home, 19 to 10, which I think is quite generous because Wolves are no special, let's be fair. So, yeah, and, uh, yeah I'm going to back Forest to win at home. I think at the city ground, there's more chance for them. They play better at the city ground than they have anywhere else. Really. Oh, bloody hell. They could come to my back garden and I'd turn them over. <laughs> <laughs> How'd they do in a way a minute? What, how'd they won out? They've won one against one. Southampton. Yeah, mm. Nathan Jones, Southampton. And we put you know, them together again, Southampton. Me and you could probably fair. turn down there and beat them <laughs> at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's I'm quite I'm quite confident. Forest at home against um, gets all surprising odds. I think that to be honest. Yeah, I, I just shared your enthusiasm. <laughs> I've uh, I've just come across a very surprising one where I scrambled for a pick, but I've got one and I'm quite co- confident with it. To be fair, uh, and like you said, Sam, very. Surprised at the odds, but I'm going to take Man United to win away at Newcastle on Sunday afternoon. Um, okay. As we know, United won in the Carabao Cup final relatively comfortably. Was Newcastle it? have won the last; it was won the last couple, so they are in a bit of a better form. But that was against Forest and Wolves, who, as we know, are, are in a vele- relegation fight. So United have been in the form that they've been in, as we all know. They were fantastic just before the international break. So. To see uh, Newcastle as favourites, I'm quite surprised at that. So happy to take United. Mm, surprising. Okay, so that is the uh, first part of the list of locking. So, Skin, over to you for the second part. Aye, yeah, yeah, aye. Right, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. You've, uh, you've picked your three, your lock, your score, your wild card. And as you know, you've got three games now to make a score prediction for to uh, finish off your potential score of six. So, The first game, as always, is the game in which the team you support is playing, and that is Nottingham Forest against Wolves. What is your score prediction for that one? I'm going to have to follow Kemp here and just go with heart overhead. uh, I'm going to have Forest. I'm praying praying they've got to win because their their fixtures are horrendous. Uh, I'll go 2-1. Can't see him not conceding with that defence. Aurier's out. Aurier has been a big plus for Forest this year. Looks like Lodi's out. I'm not quite sure how he triples the Brazilian squad, to be honest. Um, but hopefully, <laughs> Tayo Owanyi's back. Big. I think if he comes back, Johnson's fit again. Morgan gives White a want to put on a good show against Wolves. Good player. Um, That's true. Nope. That's a good point. Fingers crossed. Take us for a 2 1. Fair enough. Keylor Navas saving, saving a pen late on to uh, get the three points. Oh, we'd take it. Yeah, we'd take it. <laughs> to be honest, Controversial, but I prefer Henderson. So, is it? Quite surprised. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe it's his personality. But, I, say, uh, I hate his personality. I can't stand him. I can't. I think if he's if he's for you, you love him. Yeah. If, if maybe he's against you, you think maybe. what a prick. You know, yeah, best thing I'm about Dean Henderson is that he's still a blade <laughs> in the Premier yeah. League. Though. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Um, the second of your three games, we've gone for a bit of a relegation battle. We'll we'll get onto that shortly once we've gone through the scores, but. Some huge Premier League games this, see, uh, this weekend, sorry, with relegation implications. But uh, Saturday, three o'clock, Crystal Palace at home to Leicester. What's your score prediction for that one? A bit different for this one. I think Leicester will sort them out. I think um, okay. I'll take 1 0 Leicester. I think Palace are struggling for goals, and I'm not quite sure why they've sacked Vieira and appointed Hodgson. Hodgson's renowned for keeping it tight, taking a 1 0. So I, I can't see him being the man to get them scoring. Whereas uh, mm. Leicester, I think, with Madison firing, I, I think they'll be all right. I, I don't think they'll trouble the bottom three. They'll turn it around, even though their fans want Rogers' head on, you know, on the gates of uh, King Power. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think Leicester will take it one nil. Always surprises me that when you consider how little transfer activity they had in the summer, they were the only team that didn't sign anyone, and then they sold Schmeichel and uh, 
someone else that was pretty important to the team for who Fana. I've completely forgot. Yeah, for Fana as well to Chelsea. So I'm not really sure what you're expected to do in that situation, but is what it is. And I agree. I think they've got enough quality to turn it around uh, with the last 10 games or so. Uh, third and final game is the Sunday kickoff. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Sunday two o'clock kickoff, should I say. West Ham against Southampton. What's your score prediction there? Uh, I've gone West Ham 2-1. I know Saints are, uh, Saints are scrapping, but uh, I think they're overly reliant on their uh, Ward Prowse, and I don't yeah, think yeah. he's the sort of talisman to be able to keep a team up single handedly. Um, but yeah, West Ham usually a bit better against sort of uh, the lower teams at, at uh, whatever their ground's called, the Olympic Stadium, London, whatever it is. Yeah, your London favorite, Stadium, you know. absolutely. Queen Elizabeth Stadium, yeah, <laughs> it's also bollocks of a stadium, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, they, they sort of does out 4 <laughs> 0, obviously, but again. Forest away from home, just a floppy cock. So we might as well not bother. Um, but yeah, I think mm. West Ham will sort Southampton out pretty comfortably. Interesting. I just realised, so, Dawson, your, your camera has been reminding me of something all night, and I come for life and I think what it is. And it's the Aha music video take on me. Where I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it's, it's, it's so bad. Isn't it? behind you. It's, yeah, just it's, to me. it's like music it's, video. <laughs> it's worst quality camera ever. I've, I've got my eyes on one for yeah, uh, you've first. Got to, you've got to, back because I'll be upgrading that one. That yeah, it's not it's ideal, like to say. Grainy, grainy. Yeah, yeah. Grainy is the word. So uh, the first iPod. <laughs> that's what it is. Just got it lent up. Um, so your six selections are Arsenal as your lock, Saka as your scorer, Fleetwood as your wild card, Forest to beat Wolves two one, Palace to lose one 0 at home to Leicester and West Ham to beat Southampton 2-1. As always, we, we will review that next week. Uh, obviously, Hold we on. didn't do the show on Monday. Shells finished on two lads. He got his lock right with Slovenia. Um, and I can't for life me remember the other one he got. I think it was his score, which was Langstaff again, weren't it? So uh, he got he got, he got got two. So he's tied second on the leaderboard. Yeah, that's it. So, but Carl, two questions before you go. Uh, really enjoyed having you on, mate. But the first one is is probably not the most positive of conversations for you, but it is... Nottingham Forest and that very, very tight Premier League relegation battle. We were talking last week about there's, I think it was what, eight points between 20th and 12th, or if even that, probably even less. What's your thoughts? Crystal Palace are 12th with 27 points. Southampton are 20th with 23 points. There you go. Four points between 12th and 20th. Forest right in the mix. So, Forest chances, and then who do you think the three will be that go down? I think a lot of it hinges on Saturday's game. I think if they don't win, we have shit the bed. Because the fixtures coming up, we've got Leeds away. We've still got Man United to come to the city ground, Arsenal to come to the city ground. You know, we've got to go to Stamford Bridge, got to go to Anfield. And away from home, good God. Dreadful, dreadful. I mean, I, I love Steve Cooper. I really love him. It's, uh, you know, the guy's a genius for, for pulling us off the bottom of the league below and getting us promoted. Um, but, good God, away from home. It's really costing. Uh, so this game on Saturday, if we win it, we'll be all right. If they don't win it, I think they're done for. Do you think, but, um, do you think Cooper's to blame for the away form? Well, I think there's the first murmurings from the fans now that they're starting to ask questions. Hmm. It's, it's still got 100% support, no doubt about that. But uh, yeah, I do think they're starting to ask questions now, mainly because the away form is so shocking. No matter what he does, Nothing's improving, you know. Mm. I do think having a one-year back, uh, it sounds crazy, but Kiyate is a presence. And he, he's, he's been missing since the World Cup and got injured, and he's come back to training. So they, they both could be huge pluses. But there's questions over Johnson's fitness. And recently, without Johnson, Boris look a lost cause. Um, mm. So, yeah, Hart says we can do it. Head says it's going to be hard. But, you know, yeah. start of the season. In fact, forget start of the season. Day after... Wembley, Huddersfield Town. You look at those teams in the Premier League and you think, good God, where are we going to get one point? Never mind, you know. So anything's a bonus. It's just, it's good to be back. Do you not think, or do you not worry, or do you not think that Forest, if you do get relegated, might be in a spot of bother when it comes to the financial implications of that? Absolutely. The reason I say, say that is because what you, you've signed 20 plus players since you got promoted into the Premier League. You've spent a lot, a lot of money. Uh, probably the most or, or up there with the most money that a promoted team has spent. Um, so if you do get relegated, you have seen in the past that teams have, you know, spent, gone all out to stay up and then not managed it and then <laughs> all the way. 
Can yeah. you see is that is that a worry down the line if you do get relegated? You know, if you do stay up, you'd be okay. If you don't, could it be a sign of worse things to come? It's a fair question. You know, it's, uh, like you say, they've spent a lot of money. Personal opinion, they've spent a lot of money on a lot of shit, but yeah. they have got a few right, um, and we're relying on those to do the business. You know. We've got promoted. We spent all that money on 20-odd players and they did have to because that squad that got promoted was, it, it would have rivaled Derby's 11 points. <laughs> you know, it would have been that bad. So they had to spend the money. Um, what they've spent it on and whether Steve Cooper had a lot of input into those all of those signings, I think Morgan Gibbs-White was definitely his choice. But some of them, you're not telling me that Steve Cooper's got an eye on the Brazilian league hunting down Gustavo Scarpa and Danilo. That that's not for me come from Steve Cooper no. but uh, you know if they do go down financially who's going to take they're going to be on decent wages we've paid big fees are they going to recoup that money possibly not mm. just got to hope that if they do go down there's a contingency plan in place but the Greek owners they don't take any prisoners so whether Cooper would still be there I hope he is you know, I think it'd be a shame for as long I, I, as he wants I think it's shame, obviously, I'm a Dali fan, so I wouldn't really care. But as, yeah. far, as far as forest, forest managers go, I actually think he's a really, really good... I mean, you can't deny he's a good manager. Um, and I think it'd be a mistake, personally, to let him go. Just just on the back of an away, away form that, like you said, that squad he had, that, he had no business. You've got no business being in Premier League with that squad he had. I don't, I don't think you was probably... The, I wouldn't have had you in probably top five squads in Championship last year. And you, you got promoted. So, yeah, it's, think, there's a lot to be said for momentum. Yeah. And they had that last year. And you could feel it building. There was a feeling around the club that they were, God, they could do this. And, you know, don't talk stupid. We're bottom of the league mm. after eight games. You know, one point gained at Pride Park. Um, it's uh, just dreadful. Um, this, this year away from home, and it's really, really costing them now that the home form seems to have dwindled a bit. So they need to get that back on track starting Saturday. Otherwise, it's going to be curtains. Yeah. What a shame. As, uh, <laughs> as, as, as positive as always when it comes to Forest, mate, uh, it will never change, will it? It, no. it? You know, you set yourself up for disappointment, then uh, things can only, can only go one way, can't they? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, when you've sat through a, a 90th minute equaliser at Colchester and then you lose 3 1, I think you can pretty much, uh, you can pretty much sit <laughs> through any of these drubbings we're getting in the Premier League. Yeah, that's fair. Ag- Aggie sat there with a wry smile on his face, thinking, "Yeah, if you if you expect the worst, you can never be disappointed." So exactly, no, so, Forest England, what so. could go wrong? Yeah, it'll never be as bad as Yeovil, will it? In League One, that's that. Oh, you had to bring up the Y word, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't married at the See, time, but the missus nearly divorced me. See, could it? It could have been addressing Sheffield United then, because we also lost in the uh, League One playoffs to Yeovil as well. So I thought it was addressing me, but <laughs> big, big bogey team. Yeah, <laughs> the other team with that one, Kempy. Fair enough. Well, uh, again, pleasure having you on, mate. We're going to finish with the last question, which is the question that we ask everyone before they leave us, and that is, who is your sporting hero and why? Oh, there's no question, Stuart Pearce. Uh, you know, have to be Boris captain. Uh, just yeah. How long have you man's got? Man, you know, man's man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's psycho. You know, he <laughs> endeared himself to everybody. Possibly not in 1990, but certainly in 1996. <laughs> um, you know, everyone loved Psycho. Uh, but and he was ours. You know, what I mean, he was Forest through and through. Yeah. We had quite a few England players at that time, but Pierce was the one. Everyone knew he was Forest. You know, and he was our captain. He comes to the Trent End before, and he salute the Trent End every game, even in the old Trent End, which was an absolute shit all. But what an atmosphere! He he got it going just by himself. Yeah, you know, one season he got 18, 19 goals from left back. You know, <laughs> should well, have asked Ashley Cole. You know, Dennis Irwin. <laughs> oh, you all is is it definitely Stuart Pearce? Great answer. Yeah, it's it's, it's got to be on it. But yeah, again, pleasure, mate, having you on. Thank you very much for joining us. 13th edition of the listener lock in. Hopefully, you can get in and amongst that uh, top end of the table and not the bottom half where there are, uh, uh, well, multiple zeros. And, I can and let me prize it in the season. Cheers, there. lads. That's it, mate. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, I'll get your address and we'll send the trophy your way. But uh, good to see you, mate. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Cheers, boys. Carlos. See you later, mate. You Thanks for coming on. Take care. Thank you. Uh, thank you very Bye. much.
Carl. Um, so yes, as you were talking then about Steve Cooper and the potential of him leaving Forest at the end of the season, it brings on nicely to discuss uh, Tottenham and the sacking of Antonio Conte, of course, earlier on this week. I think the writing was on the wall for a while. It was kind of solidified over the last couple of days. And we, we obviously they've confirmed it now that he has left the club. Who do you think is the right person to come in and replace him? Who are you actually talking to me? Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> as professional as ever, Sam. We'll start with you. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, with of course the sacking of Antonio Conte. <laughs> Who do you feel is the right person to replace him at Tottenham? Oh dear, that's a that's a load of question, isn't it? Um, I don't think anybody in the right minds got good enough for that job at the minute. Um, I think it's always it's going to be the same at that club until Levy leaves. I think. Um, I don't know what's <laughs> what's going on for you boys in background. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. Go on. But no, uh, I think he's he's got to uh, he's got to go before any kind of real positive change happens at that club. Um, what do you what do you reckon, Kempy? It's not a, it's not a great posi- position for any manager to be in, is it really? That that job? No, no, it's it's not. And um, they're in a unique situation now where it looks like they've lost their director of football as well due to the Juventus scandal. Um, Nagelsmann looks like he's the bookies' favourite. You'd have thought if Pochettino was going to come in, he would have come in by now. Um, it's not a gamble. He knows the club, they know him. So you would have thought he'd have brought Poch in, get an idea as to the players that are left, get an idea as to who he wants to keep, who he wants to get rid of, and ultimately what he's working with, hopefully going into next season. So strange one, strange timing. Um, I think it will be Nagelsmann, um, mm, but I think it does depend on top four. I think if Spurs can sneak into top four, I think they will get Nagelsmann. If not, I think they will have to set off somebody a little bit less, you know, a little bit less... Uh, pedigree. With a little bit less pedigree, yeah. Thank you for bailing me out on that one. Yeah, so, I mean. yeah. Uh, if if top four, Nagelsmann. If not, I, I honestly don't know. But it's a strange... Well, uh, here's a, here's a strange another time. question on the, on the back of that then. Do you think they'll make the top four? No. I don't either. I have throughout the season. I have throughout the season mm. because of the Conte factor. No matter how much he tucks his toys out the pram, no matter how much he's a twat and he, yeah. he kicks off, ultimately in the end, he does get teams to where they need to be and where the vast majority of the time they want him to be. Um, without that now, I think Newcastle are starting to pick up a little bit of form again. Liverpool are starting to pick up a little bit of form again and starting to really crack on. So, um, yeah, and, and even we'll have to add them for it. Brighton have got three games in hand over Tottenham. If they Is win it? all their games in hand, they, they're, they're top four, in theory. You no. know, so, um, yeah, I think it'll be Newcastle or Liverpool. Can't decide on which which one of those two. Mm, right? Yeah, Liverpool's a tricky one, isn't it? You, you just, we're, we're all waiting for them to just hit that streak and hit that bit of form. That's going to get them back to where they should be, but... It's not quite materialised. I mean, at Newcastle, the same sort of thing. It's, you just don't know when, when they're going to click. What do you reckon, Skimbo? Now you're back with us. Sorry, mate. Um, Tottenham are in good form. If, if Conte doesn't have that post-match rant that he had, he's, he's more than likely still in the job, isn't he? So it's not it's not through a lack of form or, or anything like that. It was only a couple of weeks ago that Tottenham were, were top of the form table in the Premier League. So it's clearly more off-field issues or a gap in terms of drive and, and where they want to be that's, that's led to the departure. So I, I think everyone sort of had eyes on Liverpool claiming that fourth spot, didn't they, after they beat United or battered United. They, they were in form, they weren't conceding goals and then the next week they went to Bournemouth and lost 1-0. So playing City this weekend at the Etihad, so another tough game. Really, really don't know, to be honest. You've got Tottenham um, on 49 points. You've got Newcastle with two games in hand on 47. You've got Liverpool two games in hand. So I know, Kemp, you mentioned there about Brighton having three games in hand, but every team down to 12, down to Palace, where the you know, the relegation battle starts, has um, at least a game in hand. And then the three teams behind them have at least th- two games in hand. So, yeah, Will Conte leave in and having that familiar coaching staff? Ryan Mason is now the assistant manager on an interim basis till they figure out what they're doing. Will that familiarity 
sort of settle the ship and, and to call them that fourth place. I don't really know, to be, to be honest, because it, it that race is about as tight as the uh, the race at the top of the table, at the bottom of the table. But, I mean, if, you'd, if you said to make a pick right now, I probably would say Liverpool, if they win the two games and then that puts them, what, a point behind Tottenham, I think they're in prime position there to uh, scrape that fourth spot. So just to give you an idea then of um, Tottenham's new managerial system, it's Christian Stellini as their manager with Ryan Mason as the assistant, as you mentioned there, Dawson. Uh, Stellini's last job in management was for a team called US Alessandria Calcio 1912. Ooh. And last uh, US Alessandria Calcio 1912. And last season, they were relegated from Serie B. Um, and they're now in Series C, which is Can't basically wait to add this link Italian non league. It links in really well because <laughs> that's, that's his experience. That yeah. is his level of experience as a manager. And yeah. to get that against Jurgen Klopp, against Desarby, is it? Brighton's manager, against mm. um, ETH. <sighs> Not gonna happen. You, you, it's, a, it's a sheep running alongside, you know, alongside wolves. So, no. for me, yeah, for me, not happening. For me, like you, like we've agreed, um, Tottenham don't make top four. Empty not director reason. of football, have they? No, he's been bombed. No. Worldwide, it's yeah. crazy. But they, that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure on the latest of it, but I did see that that Spurs were looking for clarification on what the ban yeah. means, which I don't understand because surely a ban means means that we're getting a worldwide ban. Sorry, that means you've got just, a They probably just want to know if his season ticket's still <laughs> eligible. Yeah. It's all right to go and sit stand. Yeah, true, true. But yeah, it's uh, it's not the best time off field for Spurs, despite, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, they're, they're on field, relatively decent form. So it'll be a, very interesting to see what the next, say, two or three games brings for them. Are they going to go into a bit of free fall because of what's happening off the field or do they stay calm? You've we had, I had the rant. I had the rant before Conte, everyone. So listen to Loaded Sports, get ahead of the curve. But... I was saying about how Spurs don't have world-class players. They don't sign world-class players. They had a couple of decent players in Kane and Son. But other than that, are those players getting into a, a top three, top four team? No, they're not. And, and Conte's clearly seen that and, and is concerned about his history of success and, and what he can do with that squad. So, yeah, very interesting couple of weeks for Spurs. And it'll be interesting to see uh, if they come out of it still in form or if we'll start falling off. And, and like you said, Camp, I'm not sure Bayern manager being the favourite or ex Bayern manager being the favourite to come in, is he going to want to come into that team with his experience of playing there or managing that Bayern squad? And if they get top four? Mm, it's going to be close. They really need top four just to appeal. Um, a higher calibre manager, but I've heard reports that a lot of Tottenham players have been trying to speak back to Pochettino to get him back to the club. And I think some of that were going on before Conte left as well. So I don't know if that's going to play a part in the decision making. Whether, I mean, in my personal opinion, it was wrong to get rid of Pochettino in the first place. But I think Tottenham have had that sort of rationality about them where they've just rushed into sacking managers yeah. unnecessarily and maybe a bit pr prematurely. And this is not necessarily one of them cases because I think Conte kind of signed his own resignation with this, the run that he went on. Uh, but before then, so I think P Pochettino with a reunion. If he's happy to do so, it would be great for Tottenham, especially for next season. I think Conte were very calculated with that rant. He didn't know exactly what he was doing. And he essentially sacked himself. He, and yeah, got, the big, got the payday. He was essentially trying to get a big payday rather than resign. Yeah. In, in a word, Adam, before we do move on, who do Spurs get as their new manager? Um, Pochettino. There you go. That, that's my opinion. Right, um, so moving on to the relegation battle that is going on, and we've got quite a few games this weekend, Skin, as you've mentioned a couple of times, um, that are taking place that are, could have huge implications. Forest against Wolves, Palace against Leicester, West Ham against Southampton. We'll start with Forest against Wolves. Uh, we'll not talk too much on it because we've just had a conversation with Carl surrounding this as well. Um, Sam, I'm going to come to you first as a Derby fan. I think it'd be ideal. Um, Forest against Wolves. <laughs> Your thoughts? Well, obviously, I've backed Forrest for the win here. I think if they are going to start, as Carl B said, if they are going to start uh, any kind of survival push, it's it's this game. Home against Wolves, uh, right there with them. Point ahead, Wolves are obviously in the relegation scrap. So 
I think you, you look at where is it any of the top any of the top bottom twelve teams should I say that bottom eight teams should I say on reverse from twelve to twenty any of them could go down. Um, I was watching an interview with um, Roy Hodgson this afternoon, Palace manager obviously, and he said he's never seen a Premier League like this, Premier League season like this where just any number of them teams that far up the table could go down. It's unheard of. And the fact that we've got an actual got a title race on at the other end, it's like, technically, it's one of the best Premier Leagues we've had in years in terms of entertainment, in terms of... 100%, mate, 100%. Yeah, twists and turns, a new could go down. So, yeah, it, was, it looks like it's going to go right to end. But, yeah, back to the Forest game. Um, I do I do fancy Forest for the win, as much as it kills me to say that. But at, at the same time... I don't think any result would surprise anyone. It'd be a draw, it'd be a Wolves win. It's just one of them games, isn't it? Where both teams, it's a it's a four pointer, as I said earlier on its season. I said it's six pointer, um, big big four pointer on. Um, and I, I do I do think Forest might just do it at home. Okay, uh, Kemp, I'm going to come across to you for this next one. West Ham against Southampton. Uh, when asked last week, you mentioned I believe both of these sides. I think West Ham were just outside of the relegation zone. Southampton were relegated. So when they go head to head, do you think it's just going to be a straightforward win for West Ham? No, um, nothing straightforward at this stage in this uh, Premier League survival race. West Ham have been pretty tepid. Southampton have been worse than tepid, especially under Nathan Jones. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 going to be interesting. It's going to be intriguing. I'm not sure who's going to win. You would have to slightly side with West Ham purely down to the fact that I think they believe they're playing at home so you give them home field advantage um, but apart from that there's nothing to choose between the teams in my opinion we'll we'll have to see OK so skin over to you for Palace against Leicester two sides that one's just um, brought in new manager of course I say new manager Roy Hodgson quite familiar with Crystal Palace and Sellers Park going up against a Leicester side that some may say are underperforming by being so far down the Premier League table let the poor yeah. bastard retire in peace, eh? I know, not kidding, bless him. But Leicester lost five out of the last six games. Not a surprise that uh, fans are starting to turn on him. I, I know I defended him a little earlier on about the, the spending or lack of in the summer. Palace still, we're now heading into April on Monday and they've still not won a game this year. So it's a tough game to call I think I'll go score draw for that I'll look at a 1-1 which doesn't really do either team a favour when it comes to their own relegation survival hopes but uh, it's hard to call that at some point Palace will win a game surely they've got to win a game at some point Leicester in absolutely shocking form although they have got a little bit of individual quality up and down the pitch so yeah, I'll, I'll take a score draw there because Palace, they, they've not been getting battered. They have got the odd point against tough teams like United. They've got, they got that late equaliser at home and things like that. So I'll let you score draw. I think this is the game for Palace, I do. I think this is the one. It's, it's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be at some point. Still think yeah, was... Vieira was uh, unjustly let go myself. I don't agree with the change. I don't think I feel like they should have let Vieira go. But if they are going to do it, I think it's right to do it before this game. Um, new manager bounce against a team like Leicester, it's it's hopefully going to get you over the line and get you a very, very important and vital three points and then maybe pick up a couple of wins, you know, between now and the end of the season to try and keep them up. So don't agree with the decision, but I think the timing is ideal if you are going to make that decision. It's just short-sighted, isn't it? It's just short-sighted. I think for Palace, it's just a case of keeping themselves in the Premier League and... I think someone with the familiarity of Roy Hodgson, who's, who's got that experience with him, is the right man to do that. So, just one word. Do you think Palace stay up this year, Kemp? Yeah. Sam? Yeah. Skin? Yes. There we go. So what about you? Up. What about you, you silly folk? Yeah, I think, <laughs> they do. I think they do, yeah. I think Roy Hodgson's the right man to keep them out of trouble. And then, of course, he should retire again at the end of this season. You say, you say he's the right man to keep them out of trouble. They did just get relegated with Watford, so... Ah, yeah, but Watford yeah. go through managers like you go through me. Goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do. Right, so let's move on to the main event, as some may call it, of the weekend: Manchester it's City against Liverpool at half past twelve on Saturday. Surprised for me that it's an early kickoff on a Saturday for such a big game between Man City and Liverpool. Um, for me, I'd probably call this quite title-defining if Man City are to lose this game against Liverpool and Arsenal pick up the three points against Fulham. 
I know mm. I've been saying from the beginning, I think Arsenal are going to walk away as Premier League champions at the end of the season. I think this just solidifies that. Yes, they'll still have the points difference over City. City will still have the game in hand. But I think it's kind of set in stone then for Arsenal that they're going to go all the way and lift the trophy. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. Like I say, Liverpool win and Arsenal win at the weekend. It's an 11-point gap, which City win their game in hand and then City beat Arsenal. That's still a five-point gap with, what, five or six games to play. So, got to agree with you there. I do think City will win. I, they, they can't not at this point regardless of strength of opponent, they've got to start winning every single game because, well, again, it's a, it's an eight-point gap. So, yeah, it, they, they've got to start winning. I had Liverpool as my backup wild card. Did you? Oh, I interesting. Had, uh, yeah. I, I, was, I was flirting with the idea of backing City as my lot, to be honest. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I do, do feel quite confident that they will see yeah. it off. Yeah, um, I think I think I'd be more confident with City as my lock over Liverpool as my wild card. I think, given the choice, yeah, I think I think so. And you mentioned there we were talking about Liverpool potentially getting top four, and <clears throat> that one minute they look like they're going to get back in it and start firing on all cylinders, and then next minute they look like this apathetic, old, you know, aging team that that they've looked yeah. like for the vast majority of the season. I think at this moment in time, with the form that City were in just before the international break, yes, it's Champions League and 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 you know FA Cup, but they won seven nil against Leipzig and six nil against Burnley. They were in irresistible yeah. form before um, before the, uh, the the international break, and I think that will continue Holland or not, to be quite honest with you. I think City will win. And I think they'll win quite comfortably. The way City play, you know, it's 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 so exhausting for teams to play against Man City, especially at the Etihad on such an open pitch. Um, Liverpool just haven't got the legs to deal with it. And I think first half will be KJ. Second half, Liverpool will just get tired. And I think, I wouldn't surprise me if City bang three or four in, to be honest. Agreed. Okay. Very interesting. Big game. Who's, who's watching live? I'll be watching it live next to the Premier League trophy. Oh, yes, mate. Talk, talk us through that very quickly. Uh, Aggie's getting to uh, see, as he mentioned there, the Premier League trophy this uh, this weekend. Talk us through the, the occasion. Yeah, the team that I uh, do a lot of coverage for, Stavey Miners Welfare, have received a grant that is offered out from Premier League clubs to grassroots sides. And the Premier League trophy, as a result of that, is making the rounds of the grassroots sides that it's supported, one of which is Stavely. And for the final home game of the season this Saturday, the Premier League trophy will be there. I like it. Um, I know I know. Kemp and Sam, I, I included you in that question. Sam, please stop, mate, because it's the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Um, I know I mentioned, or I included you in the question of if you were watching live, but you two are also on a little bit of a uh, local <laughs> non-league football venture this weekend. Loaded Sport really covering the grounds this weekend. Uh, talk us through what you pair are doing. Well, yeah, we might. What, what do you think, Sam? Watching it live in a pub somewhere? Yeah, Vic, maybe. Vic, next door. Uh, nailed it. I've got no idea, mate. I don't know, yeah, what, mate, I don't know what's mate, going mate, up, do I? Vic's a good Vic. spot. Vic, Vic right Grand. next door to Grand. Um, let's, get, let's get down there early, get some breakers and get in there. Do you want to tell our listeners Liverpool. where you're going? Because you've still not revealed it. Yeah, I'll just... Ah, it's just so <laughs> ten talks, ten talks. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, we are going to watch uh, Alfton Down, Alfton Town versus Leamington. Uh, obviously, in the National League North, we have both recently got quite heavily into Football Manager, and Good let's just say I've got a bone <laughs> to pick. Well, Kemp's been doing it for years, but obviously, yeah, we've all, it's a, it's for that way, uh, we've all collectively come together over the last month or so. Yeah, that's yeah. the one mesh. Um, and let's just say I've got a bone to pick with Wayne Bradley. So. <laughs> <laughs> He, um, he recently dismissed me on my uh, on my football manager save <laughs> after after getting them to promote into the national league wasn't good enough getting relegated the season after so um, so yeah I've heard, I've, um, I've heard you've paid extra for hospitality tickets just so you'll know you'll be in St. part at ground as in I'm not daft mate so I'm not daft. Weird, like, hospitality no. over to it about seventeen quid and all they were two pound <laughs> <laughs> really love that so if you're seeing the that. so if you see in the non-league paper this weekend if you see uh, a picture of uh, of somebody getting the Offerton chairman by the scruff of the neck uh, yeah. loaded sport loaded sports giving you a fair idea as to who it is so yeah. there you go Absolutely. Well, you hopefully like, on notice that's it fair <laughs> warning well hopefully lads you can get a bit of video content for our social media pages 
Um, Katie loves her reel, so uh, get some videos and, and get her creating. But yeah, good to good to hear that uh, loaded sport are covering a few bases this weekend. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. So uh, that is for the football talk. Let's move on now to another edition of Kempy's Comeback Corner. Kemp. Strap oh, yourselves baby, in, motherfuckers. Baby, baby, it's an important weekend in boxing this weekend. There's no MMA to speak of this weekend. Um, the, the, the closest thing I would say to a decent MMA show this weekend is Anthony Showtime Pettis, Dawson. I don't know if you know about this. I, I, don't, mate, I thought you were going to say Sam against Bradley. Like, no, but, no. Uh, well, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's on the undercard. Is he in the um, Pettis Poir? <laughs> yeah, <she won. laughs> he kicked your That's fucking head in for that. Absolutely <laughs> awful. Yeah, Anthony Showtime Pettis Dawson. I don't know if you know, is fighting. Right, I'm gonna all all three of you. I'm gonna give you a guess. Right, I know you don't oh know combat God. sports ridiculously well. He's fighting a Hall of Fame boxer in a boxing match this weekend. So an MMA fighter who used to be the lightweight champion of the world okay. um, is fighting a former legendary Hall of Fame boxer. This weekend, Dawson, who do you think it is? No googling. No, I'm not googling, but I was going to make it the first name that comes to my head, and then I was like, no, it can't be surely, but I'll stick to it just for, for the crack. Evander Holyfield, incorrect. Yeah, I didn't think so, but I couldn't go against it. Uh, I mean, I was going to say Mayweather, but I guess he doesn't really qualify for the Hall of Fame scenes. Is still mind you, he's not he has retired, anti technically. So I, I am going to say, yeah, I'm going to go with Mayweather, incorrect. Okay. All, all on Adam. I'm going to say, just because I've seen that he's been training a lot lately, Mike Tyson. Oh, I'll I'm, tell you I'm what, just... Adam. Adam, you were the closest. And the reason you were the closest is because Mike Tyson's last fight was against a man called Roy Jones Jr. Is it? And Roy Jones Jr. is fighting Anthony Showtime. Can be tips, can be moved, This can weekend. Be right. um, well, carry on. Yeah. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say rest. Yeah, so April the yeah. first. Yeah, you can't <laughs> say rest. Uh, April the first, Gamebred Boxing. Now that name might sound familiar to you, Dawson. Uh, no. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal is the promoter mm. for Gamebred okay. Boxing. Yeah, so Jorge Masvidal is the promoter for this uh, particular. Did you just put in like the world's baddest motherfuckers on the card? Looks Matched like them it, together. Because you've got because not only have you got that, you've got Vitor Belfort versus Jacare Souza. We've got Jose Jose Aldo against Jeremy Stevens, yeah, and and a few Mate, more. This few is more worth the pay per view, so, pay per view price alone for the intrigue up by itself. It mm. really is. So yeah, a, an interesting night of fights this week, and it's not quite YouTube boxing because they're all former fighters, but yeah. it's it's a it's a very interesting card that the exhibition it's a, exhibition. Yeah, yeah, it's, and some really, really good, interesting exhibition fights. So, um, yeah, looking forward to uh, looking forward to that, and uh, and we'll see how that uh, how that plays out this weekend. I will be watching. I will uh, make the time to uh, to get that watch this weekend as well. Um, so, the main event, as we, we we may or may not say, in in the proper boxing game, Sam, as you just uh, notion to. O2 Arena, I was there a couple of weeks ago for UFC 286. I will never stop oh, mentioning yeah. that until the day hey, I die. Um, embrace. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Uh, Anthony Joshua returns. It's a new door as Matchroom are trying to promote it. Um, new it's door and Joshua. New day. Go on then, belt it out if you're going to belt it out. It was Andrew um, that did it. Oh, there you go, that doesn't surprise me. O2 Arena in London. Uh, Anthony Joshua's stomping ground after uh, getting himself out to Texas for a few months and getting some training in under his new trainer, Derek James. Um, Dawson, Anthony Joshua, new dawn, or is it his final his final chance? <sighs> it's his final chance because this is a fight. Ultimately, he's got to dominate. He's got to dominate it. This has got to be... I, I think we could call this a statement fight. It's not going to set the world on fire. He's not going to... People aren't going to say, oh, my God, he's on top of the world. He's absolutely amazing. But this is more about people saying, right, he's not past it. He's not finished. He's not... You know, all the things that you said there. So this is just about head back above water, foot back on the ladder and move on. I actually, I was watching the highlights from the um, first fight against Andy Ruiz earlier today. and. It just seems to be when he doesn't come up against a conventional sort of fighter, that's where he struggles. 
because he is very much a, a product of the sport and the traditions of it. He's a very, he's quite a classical fighter. He, get, he gets the foundations right. And it seems that when he comes across someone that is a little bit off of that, that's where he seems to struggle. So, yeah, I, I don't think this is much about, like I said, getting back on top. It's just more about stabilising himself a little bit, ready to really push on. It doesn't look like Fury is ever going to happen. So I'm not really sure what is next based on the outcome of this fight. But, yeah. It just needs to be a statement win of, yeah, not I'm back and I'm going to be on top of the world, but more, I'm not done yet. And I think there is a difference between the two. I yeah, think a lot of people uh, are, are coming, no. coming out. Sorry, mate. I think a lot of people no, are coming no. out with the no. same sort of opinion on the, on Franklin. Like it's, a, it's, it's, it's a get back in the ring sort of fight, but I honestly wouldn't sleep on him. I don't think he's... Okay. Um, I, I, I've, I'm going to stick my neck out on the line here, and I think Joshua really struggles with him. Really struggles with him. Uh, I'm almost tempted to say I can see an upset happening. I'm oh, almost, okay. almost tempted. I, I, I don't know if I'm quite, quite but... yeah, it's like that. But you heard it here first, I reckon that I did. I think Franklin can cause him, Joshua problems. I really mm-hmm. do. Let's just say that. Um, That's exciting. That makes me to tingle. Jermaine Franklin like seven to one. Exactly. If if you fancy a little tickle on it, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I don't think he's um, is this fight. That, uh, that a lot of people are saying is going to be where it's just a touch up, and you know, is Joshua when was last time he fought? Twenty twenty was it last time he fought? It's been a while. He, he fought in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. It wasn't that definitely, long ago. Definitely wasn't. It definitely wasn't twenty two. It was at least two years ago. His it, last fight. Joshua. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm actually, really not actually, sure. Joshua's last fight was against uh, Usyk in twenty two. Yeah, yep. August, August twenty two. So yeah, what? it wasn't as long nine ago as you thought it was. Oh yeah, eight, definitely eight, nine I months ago. It was, uh, I thought for some reason no. I thought it was two year ago. Um, well, I mean, even in that fight, he didn't look uh, he didn't look great, did he? he was, that was his last. I think that was his last win two years ago. Is what you're trying to refer? Okay. His to. his last yeah his last win was December twenty twenty. Yeah. So two and a bit years ago against Pulev. Yeah. No, Pulev. Pulev, sorry, Pulev. That, that were ages ago, and all that Pulev fight yeah. just seems like another lifetime ago. Yeah, two and um, a bit years I, ago. I, I I think he's going to really struggle with this this fight. I really do. Interesting. Very interesting. And I must admit, Sam, you are the first person I have heard talk about this fight in any capacity who says that he is going to struggle. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Stranger things have happened. Buster yeah. Douglas was a much bigger underdog exactly. when he fought Mike Tyson than Jim, uh, Jim, uh, Jermaine Franklin is fighting Anthony Joshua. Before I do touch on Joshua and Franklin. I do want to quickly go through the undercard because to be fair to Eddie Hearn and Match Room and DAZN, it's a really, really good undercard, which I don't often say that about boxing, but this one's a cracker. Uh, Campbell Hatton versus Louis Fielding. Campbell Hatton, son of Ricky Hatton, um, has struggled, especially earlier in his career. Very, very big shoes to fill. Ricky Hatton, an absolute legend of the game in, in the UK um, and has struggled to, to match and reach those expectations in his first few fights. So Campbell Hatton hoping to get a good win against a good seasoned pro like Louis Fielding. Um, Galal Yafai, a, an Olympian who's shown a real load of promise against River Wilson Brent in the middleweight division, uh, in the flightweight division, sorry, against Moises Caleros. And uh, I think Galal Yafai will come out with a statement win there. There's also, if you can get onto the uh, the pay-per-view or, or onto the zone a little bit earlier than you normally would, you got me. Uh, Fabio Wardley is fighting um, Michael Polite Coffee, and Fabio Wardley is the British champion. And to be fair, a real handful who uh, who can throw hands, and he's got a lot of skill and a lot of quality behind him. Fabio Wardley didn't have an amateur career; he literally started in white collar boxing, and he's now British champion, and and he's going for a, a, a an international belt, which is. Basically, it gets you on the the world stage if you win an international belt. There's more belts in boxing than there is in Aggie's uh, in Aggie's classic wardrobe. Um, and the main event: Anthony Joshua against Jermaine Franklin. Jermaine Franklin is very much, in my opinion, a tune up fight. Getting Joshua back into the division, um, I think it will be a very very easy win for Anthony Joshua. I think it'll take him four rounds at the very very most. Yeah, and that's not me bigging up Joshua saying he's the best thing since last bread. No. I personally think Joshua is probably the fifth best heavyweight in the world right now. So he's nowhere near the top of the tree, but Jermaine Franklin is very, very, very far down that tree. Um, 31st, I think in terms of the world rankings for heavyweights, um, 
I think he's very, very happy to take the money, as, as I would be, to get paid millions, to get punched in the face. I'd love it. So I can't say I blame him on that respect. But before fight week, I did sort of think not quite not quite as similar to you there, Sam, in that in the respect of you know Franklin yeah. could upset him. But I did think it won't be as quick and as easy for Joshua as a lot of people are thinking right. it might be. But then I've seen Franklin on fight week. He's very happy to be here. He's very he's very friendly. He's very nice. He he doesn't seem like he's got much snap to him. It doesn't seem like he's got much much of the sort of eye of the tiger about him that he wants to come in and do damage. I think he's quite happy to get in there. I think Ruiz get a pay day, though, dance he? around for five rounds and uh, and and go from there. He didn't, but Ruiz is is a different character, Andy Ruiz. Um, he's always been the same throughout his career. I've seen Jermaine Franklin in the build up to the Dillian White in the Dillian White fight that he, he lost a close decision to. That was his most close. previous fight, um, and he did look as though he'd got that little bit of snap to him, that little bit of eye of the tiger to him. Andy Ruiz has never really approached fight week and, and stuff like that. He's always been a pretty happy go lucky guy, and that's always his attitude. I don't know. I just think Jermaine's his only right. loss, by the way, his only loss as well. Dillian White was. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, yeah. But again, in boxing. He probably fought 20 tomato cans before he fought Dillian White, you know, <laughs> so it's it's difficult to say. But I'll go around the room then. Adam, with your very limited knowledge, I'm still going to come to you, mate, so you're not going to get away with it. But Dawson, I will come to you first. A winner from the Joshua Franklin fight and a round in which you think it will be done. Can't hear you, mate. Can anybody else hear him? No. Can't hear you, mate. You've gone. Sam, let's come to oh. you. Well, Dawson. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. Well, there you go. Can you hear me now? I can no, hear you now, mate. Hello. I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah. I will go with Anthony Joshua. Round five. Round five. Okay. And the TKO or yes, just mate. stoppage or um, submission. Retired submission. Yeah, no, TKO, mate. TKO. Okay. No, Re ref ref weighs it off. No worries at all. Adam? I've gone Joshua in the sixth. Joshua in the sixth. Okay. Sambo. Stick your neck on the line, sunshine. Put my money where the mouth is. Go on. <laughs> Get your feet out. Yeah. Put I am going to say a knockout in the tenth round for Jermaine Franklin. Wow. Wait. Are we that wild card? Now. And I'm telling you now, if somebody, if it's not you, Sam, if somebody listening to this does not put a fiver on that, um, you're a fool because Sam could pull yeah, it out of the bag very think, easily. I think this is the fight that retires Anthony Joshua. I think he's we'll done just, after this fight. I will just point out, Sam, if I know Kent mentioned a fiver there, but uh, if you do want to stick a, a quid on a round 10 win for Jermaine Franklin, it does currently sit at 100 to 1. Wow. Um, Oh, every, to be fair, every, every round of him winning is 100 to 1. because So the bookies are not giving Franklin a sniff in any way, shape or form. So huge not call from you. Not even a boxer's chance. chance. Nothing. No, not even a puncher's chance, unfortunately. So, But hey, we'll see. We'll see. And I'm sure we will update everybody if Sam does decide to take a little one pound punt on Jermaine Franklin to, uh, to be anti Joshua in the 10th answer. round. Just before we do sort of shift on to the next uh, the next part of Loaded Sport this evening, quick question for you all in one sentence. If Anthony Joshua does lose this fight and Sam is correct in his prediction, Dawson, after this fight, if Anthony Joshua loses, does he retire, yes or no? No, because I don't think he'd want to go out like that. Okay. Sam? I think he does. Yeah, I think he does. He, he mentioned it sarcastically in an interview on uh, uh, this morning or something like that. Um, and and I, I'm trying to think. It went, it went this morning. It was something else. Good morning, Britain, was it? Yes, that's the one. And uh, you see him we started shadow boxing while they were talking Good, to Suzanne. The, the, reason, the reason that he said that is because a lot of people have been that's asking what I mean. Him it was a sarcastic... Question. Yeah, yeah, it 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 was definitely a sarcastic response, and he did explain that in the interview. He said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm saying I'm retiring because that's what obviously everyone wants. Everyone keeps asking me if I'm retiring. I think if he does lose it, I I think I mean this is me. I'm obviously don't know fucking Joshua from Adam, but literally Adam. But what, um, what's that you got to do with? <laughs> but I just don't think he just seems to have. He seems to be missing that love for it. Whenever he's 
speaking. There just doesn't seem to be any fire in him. And I don't know. I just think since it goes back to the um, the Ruiz fight, I think ever since that fight or that series yeah. of fights, he just seems to have lost something. I think it is a confidence thing. I think it's definitely mental with him. Um, yeah. He's, uh, I think he's, he's believed the hype and he's been knocked down a couple of pegs since then. And it's the chicken well, come home to roost. Not to toot my own horn, and I know I'm not one for doing that, but um, definitely it's a shame. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame we didn't start loaded sport many years ago because I, I, I would like to say that I was a bit ahead of the curve on saying that AJ was overrated. And did. overrated like doesn't that. necessarily mean bad. I just think, no. you know, a handsome lad, heavyweight division was a bit in the dumps after the success boy, of the Nares. Yeah. It was the perfect poster boy for both British boxing and also the fact that he was a heavyweight as well, which has always been the sort of the glitz and glamour and the headline of, of any combat sport, but boxing especially. So it was it was a great opportunity for him when he came in because the heavyweight division wasn't what it was in the nineties at its peak and you know, all that kind of stuff. But like I said earlier, he's, he's quite a traditional fighter. He's a good fighter, don't get me wrong. Again, overrated doesn't mean bad, but I think stick him in the night is in the absolute prime of that division. I I don't really think he's much, you know, he doesn't really get a look in. So, Can you imagine yeah. against Lewis? <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And then everyone else that was around at that time. But it's clear that he's on the tail end of his career. It's clear that he's got a few options on what he's going to go next. He's never going to be short of money coming in, whether that's, you know, aftershave adverts or, or anything, you know what I mean? Like I said, he's a good-looking lad. He's a great poster boy. It, it, on a on a media aspect, he always seems to come across like, a, you know, he comes across well in that aspect. So he's never going to struggle for work. I'm just not really sure what's next when it comes to him in a boxing ring because what's left for him to do, really? The Fury fight, but that's a few years too late at this point. As much as people will pay for it and pay for tickets to go if it were to happen, but yeah. it's not happening anytime soon. Yeah, and you're right. And I think from from that perspective, you know, we, we talk about will he retire, will he not? I think the reason why I think he, he would sort of sail off into the sunset and potentially only do exhibitions after that if he did lose is that who are we going to be interested in seeing him fight? If he loses against Jermaine Franklin, I don't want to see him fight anybody. Uh, I, I don't want to see him fight again, to be quite honest with you. Losing but but I'll, I'll, I'll throw position. that back at you. If he loses at the weekend and then they announce <laughs> August next year, Wembley Stadium, AJ versus Fury, you're going to want to watch it. Nope. But you will. You will. When the time I, comes, I, I, you'll I would, I would. I would for the same reason that I'd want to watch a Tiger fighting against a little Panda. chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah, because I just want to see the slaughter. Because it would literally be that. It would it'd be, it'd be like a freak show. You said um, yourself earlier, Skin, about how AJ struggles against unorthodox style fight. Obviously, we say unorthodox normally left-handed, but yeah. unorthodox style fighting, and that is literally Tyson Fury. That's exactly yeah, yeah. what he is. He's, awkward, he's an awkward boxer. And I mm-hmm. think he'd just leather AJ. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. And I think a comparison that I did hear quite recently about AJ, and I don't know how much you all, you boys all did follow sort of 1990s boxing, a comparison was made between AJ and Frank Bruno. And I think that's a yeah. really, really good comparison. Really, really good British heavyweight, you know, was heavyweight champion of the world. Um, but ultimately when it came again, you know, when it comes to fighting these really top level guys in the peak of their careers. Then he met Tyson. Just can't get it done. Yeah. Just can't get it done. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a different uh, Kempis Combat Corner this week, and I appreciate the contribution from everybody this week. It's it's fantastic to have different opinions. And if you have got a spare quid this weekend, um, pop it on Jermaine, Jermaine Franklin in the 10th round. You heard it here first. Adam? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on now to talk about the third race of the Formula One season at the Australian Grand Prix. And the standings, as it is at the moment, is Max Verstappen out in first place with Sergio Perez just a point behind him? Skin, you're going to have to take the lead on this. Week. My voice is about gone. Yes, mate. At third race, as you say, absolutely fuming because we're at the third race and Sam Kemp not being the F1 fans, Kemp's falling asleep just as we're talking about it. But imagine you've waited months on end for the new Formula One season. All the stories that have come into play about Max, about Lewis, about Red Bull, about Ferrari and the tactical issues and all the things like that. Really trying not to laugh because you'll not see this on the stream because it'll focus on me talking. But Sam's changing his background to pictures of Adam, and it's I'm trying so hard. But anyway, lads, Sam Kemp, third race of the season. You've been waiting for it. You've just oh, had a two sorry. week break. Guess what happens after this weekend in Australia? What happens? There's a month long break till the next race. 
brilliant. Kills yeah. like, international, like international breaks, this, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, absolutely that. Obviously, being on the other side of the world, they got to compensate for travel and all that kind of stuff. But, Aggie, very quickly to drop another sport in there, but the race starts at 6.30 Sunday morning. WrestleMania, you're a big wrestle, wrestling fan, is on Saturday night. What's Are you are you doing the all-nighter of, of watching that and then straight into the F1, or are you... Uh, are you going to be sensible? I'm going to be sensible, mate. My interest in wrestling hasn't been that high this last year. I probably won't be watching WrestleMania. I already haven't booked the day after off work, so I probably won't be uh, staying up Sunday night either. Um, so now I'll be up, if possible, early enough to watch uh, watch the race and undoubtedly see Max win again. Yeah, I, uh, I I do always enjoy the the very early races as opposed to the later ones. Um, Australia being a half six start is maybe a little bit too early for my liking, but it is a great track. It is one of my favourites to play on the game. It's hard to argue against a max win. But, Aggie, I am two for two so far this season, aren't I? Um, and you know what? I am going to go for this being the first race that a Red Bull does not win. Okay. That is my bold prediction. And who do I go for? Do I go for a Fernando who is driving in a car that is performing phenomenally well? Uh, I think you have to if you're not going for Red Bull I think Fernando's to play a shout he's finished third on both occasions far ahead of the Mercedes the, the Ferraris have been nowhere in sight I think if you're going for someone other than Red Bull you have to have to go for Fernando I'm going to I'm going to swing for the fence and I'm going to go for Lewis Hamilton wins on uh, on Sunday I don't know why I'm saying that there's no real evidence to, to suggest that might happen but the uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Lewis just to change it up because Max and or Red Bull can't win every single race, surely. Well, Lewis has said in the last 12 hours that it could take around a year for Mercedes to catch up with the Red Bull. <laughs> well, well, I ain't seen that, so you could have told me that before I started to make my prediction. Um, Max wins on Sunday. OK, I'm, I'm staying with, with Max winning again. Um, yeah, I'll been, go with uh, that as well. Three out of three for the Red Bulls. Would not surprise me if Checo got uh, second and, and Red Bull just continued their domination. So because uh, I'm losing concentration with Sam and Kemp pissing about, we're going to move on to the darts so they can get back into the uh, the conversation. Uh, of course, with uh, Night 7 concluding last week in Newcastle, uh, we know as much in Night 8 that there is not a win for Peter Wright still. But, but just just before we do carry on with the darts, <laughs> I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. I'd love to know what I've done wrong. I've not done a. I've not done a fucking thing. What are you talking about? Well, you you got a pillow ready to go to sleep. So I'm laughing. So I'm I'm laughing because Sam is the funniest motherfucker to walk the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking. About. And that's and that's my <laughs> fault. That's my fault, is it? Yeah, Peter Wright's fucking shit, mate. What else do we need to say? What else do we need I'll, to talk about? I tell you, I tell you what though, Gerwin Price is on the comeback, isn't he? Your Fire. your pre-tournament pick. <laughs> he's on yeah, fire baby he's on fire I mentioned to you last week didn't I heading into the final against Van Gerwen he missed 13 shots at the double and <laughs> eventually won anyway and then beat Van Gerwen 6-1 you had all the stats ready didn't you and then it uh, blew up but yeah um, Gerwen Price uh, Gerwin, Gerwin Price Gerwin Price played really well in that final no, was last Thursday was the uh, Italy England game, which we've not really commented too much on the uh, England performance. Surprisingly, we uh, would, would have been interesting. Maybe we'll get into that very quickly at the end. But uh, yeah, watched the final. I didn't see any of the others because I was watching that Italy game, and and Price played really well. To be fair, Van Gerwen didn't necessarily play bad, really badly. I can't remember fucking words out. What's happening here? Um, but yeah, Price pretty comfortable. Another win. He looks like he could go well in, in Berlin this week. Um, and yeah, close the gap. Obviously, it's not a league table format in terms of who finishes top wins. It is a, a top four go through to the knockouts. And at that point, anyone can win. Yeah, Sam, what's your thoughts? You've gone for the uh, the ultimate underdog in the uh, Darts Premier League this year. Yeah, it's looking to be a bit of a wild stab at dark, isn't it, that one? We've not you see him beat Van Gogh in 6 0 of the week. Yeah, he smashed him to bits, bless him. Um, well, that, that was, well, that Newcastle as well in front of it. I no, I think a week before he did that. That were in Yeah, it was not yeah. 6 0. Yeah. yeah, it's, um, I think you were a bit naive of me, really, just getting into darts. Just uh, off the back of seeing him do that, uh, that pre tournament win, and I, I probably 
probably a little bit uh, wet behind the ears when it comes to that pick. But um, but hey, I will move on. And I've got a couple of new darts today come through. So I'm going to be uh, taking my darts out, I think, when I uh, go with Kempe on Saturday, just in case we find a little dart board. <laughs> I weren't going to pack my arrows, but I am now. Oh, get them packed, mate. Get get them pack. Vic's got one. <laughs> not, sure, not sure you're getting into Impact Arena after with your darts. You might need to leave them behind bar, but... Yeah, that's a good shout, to be fair. Yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to sound throwing him at Wayne Bradley, do we? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it, you've been unfortunate with that one, to be fair. With we, we, Chris Doby, uh, it, like, like Dawson has just said, he did smash Michael Van Gerwen. Gerwin Price then beat him in final, but, you know, what can you do? <laughs> um, you know, but, but it yeah. It to that week one, didn't it? When Sam went on yeah. with Chris Doby and then he won that one, yeah. it was like, oh, my we fucking won with Pete, God. Weren't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's been down really since Sam. It really was. But yeah, I think we are now starting to see, um, as Randy Savage says, the cream rising to the top. I think you are going to start oh, seeing coffee. now. Yeah, in the big time. Uh, you Sam, are gonna please start fucking seeing... stop, man. I, I know you're just going to see me talking. But you are going to see uh, Gerwin it's... Price. I'm going to carry on saying so you are going to see <laughs> Gerwin Price. Uh, Michael Van Gerwin, Michael Smith, um, you know, maybe... Nathan Aspel, I don't know, but but those three three or four um, of, of the top players get to a position where they're ready to go. I was just going to make a comment about Sam saying that it was a bit of a wild stab in the dark for going for Adobe. With him being the underdog, yeah, you could probably say that, but he's not too far about making it into the playoffs himself anyway. Hmm. He's the highest of the, the best of the rest, if you will. Uh, he's only two points behind Michael Smith. Any given Sunday, as Skin says, any opportunity. I can't even look at the screen when I'm talking just because of that. <laughs> I'm trying uh, to keep it as professional as I possibly can. So it's hard. <laughs> on to week this week. What have we ever been professional, mate? Come this on. is what we've been missing. Uh, right, so um, week eight, night eight of the Darts Premier League. Quick prediction. Kemp, we'll start with you. Night eight. Oh, we're cracking through it now, boys. We really, really are. Where is um, it? How is it? I'm pretty Jim? sure it's in Berlin. Pretty yeah. sure it's, I'm pretty the sure it's night. Arena. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's night. I'm pretty sure it's night nine. But we'll it is night nine. nine. Probably it's probably it's probably loaded sport exclusive. Loaded sport will be in attendance for the uh, the night in Sheffield. Repeat of the World Championship final. Michael Smith versus Michael Van Gerwen. Oh my God, lads! I tell you what, Press we're passes. going to be rapid. Press passes, we're in the box. We're, we're going places, lads, you know. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to back my boy in the Mercedes-Benz Arena. I'm going to back Gerwin Price. Got Peter Wright in the in the quarterfinal. Um, and to be fair, even with my dart throwing at weekend, I could beat Peter <laughs> Wright at the moment. So uh, that's not going to be a difficult one. And then it's either Clayton or Van Gerwin. If Van Gerwin wins, which is likely to happen, then it's it's going to be a struggle for him, to be fair. But I do back him. Uh, if Johnny Clayton wins, then then I do back Gerwin Price against Johnny Clayton, no matter what. And then when it when it gets to the final, I think the other side of the uh, of the draw is uh, is a little bit easier. So I can see him uh, beating any of Dimitri Van der Berg, Michael Smith, Nathan Aspinall, or Chris Dobie. So I'm backing my boy tonight, boys. I'm backing uh, Gerwin Price. Nice, uh, Sam. Are you going to be doing the same? Yeah, well, no, I'll be doing the same as Kemp. I actually think his man's probably the most informed player out of a lot of them at the minute, uh, the Ice Man, and I'll uh, I'll be I'll be following Kemp's suit there and backing him for sure. I think that's a, a fair shout, Skin. Um, I think I'm going to go Michael Smith this week. Just looking at that draw, Michael? a lot a, a lot of weeks I've looked at sort of which half the draw looks a little bit easier. And a couple of weeks ago, back Johnny Clayton, who I think got to the final before losing to Van Gerwen, if I remember rightly. So. That should be a close game. Going price should beat Peter Wright, but you look at the other half of the draw, Vanderbilt, you know, I'm always going to go against him. Aspinall, Doby haven't been in the best of forms compared to what they have been in the last six months. So I think it's a really good opportunity this week for Michael Smith to uh, take the 10K, take the nightly win and uh, get himself back towards the top of the table. I'm going to agree with you and go with uh, Michael Smith. The look of the draws worked in his favour for Getting through to the final and then just in, in one game. I think he's got enough about him to see off uh, Gerwin Price or Michael Van Gerwin, depending on which one gets to the final. I can't see it being any of uh, the others apart from those two, to be fair, from that side of the draw. So I'm going to go with uh, Michael Smith to win it all. Just before we do conclude for episode 42 then, let's talk about England against Italy and England against Ukraine. Uh, that took place last week as I was the only one with uh, getting both predictions correct in that England were to win both the games. 
Well, uh, shall we save Kemp for the end? Because that's where the fire is. I'll just very quickly go. Um, watch both games. Ukraine is what it is. Classic England qualifying game at home. Comfortable. Never really in doubt. Italy game showed a little bit of fire. Early lead. Genuinely thought Italy were going to come back and get an equaliser because they were dominating that last sort of 15, 20 minutes. But again, they got the win, which not a lot of us expected other than, other than you, Aggie. So fair play there. Six points, but again, we said it last week, didn't we? They dominate qualifying, and when it gets to the big time, that's that's when they falter somewhere. So I'm not really going to get my hopes up or or doubt it any more than what I was um, a week and a half ago, to be quite honest with you. I'm interested to hear Kemp's oh. opinion on the Italy game, because whilst we did get away with the win, it was a kind of hard-working performance towards the end, when, of course, went down to 10 men. It was kind of a valiant performance or something that... You could take a lot of pride. I know you've mentioned that, of course, you, you England do perform much better when it comes to the, the qualifying for the Euros and for the World Cup. But against the current um, European champions, it, it's still not going to be an easy game, especially in Italy. And I think it was something like 40 odd, 50 years that England last beat Italy in Italy. So there's a lot more that can be taken from that for us. So, Kemp, I, I want to hear your thoughts on, first of all, the game against Italy. Yeah, Italy, who uh, also didn't qualify for the World Cup. Yeah, listen, you know, it, it's, it was a good performance. Um, I, I was very, very impressed with the grit and the determination at the end of that game. I, I would normally see a Gareth Southgate side capitulate in that situation. They didn't, which I was quite happy with. Um, I, I think they played pretty well. I, nothing surprised me. that They've got good players and they play good football, and, and that doesn't surprise me at all. It's qualifying. We've talked about this how many times? I don't know. We said it this Lamb, time last week, mate. Lamb, it's exactly what we said. Piece. You know, England in qualifying, absolutely no problem. Seeing the Italians off, seeing Ukraine off, which, let's be honest, again, as Dawson's just mentioned, is 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 not a difficult thing to do, you would imagine, on paper. Um, but ultimately, they did the job, and, and that's the main thing. Two games, six points, a really good performance against Italy. Um, I'm not surprised by anything. I, I didn't think they would win, but they have won. It was a fairly close game in the end. They, they showed a lot of grit and determination. They did well. But ultimately, mate, it means fuck all. And where, was that, um, was that? where was that gritty determination in two years ago against that other Italian team? When uh, they all up? Need I say more, mate? Need oh, I say what more, what mate, could have been? It's uh, we're all we're all think we're all singing from the same hymn sheet here. It's um, it's it is what nope, it is. It's coming home. Well, <laughs> okay, we'll leave you to last and end on a positive note. But um, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? It's Italy away, which to a fair hardest game of the entire group, and we've mm. won. And then Ukraine's probably second hardest, even though it's home. Probably Ukraine always going to be, depending where that is. Obviously, it's a fucking shit all at mini Ukraine so you're not yeah but have, they, have they said anything in regards to where those games are played because it's know. definitely not going to be uh, I mean, no it's the 9th of September 2023 is when that game will be played but we don't know when or where it will be played at this point in time no that's what I mean so it's not it's not going to be probably as an intimidating atmosphere as it normally would be it's probably going to be in some kind of neutral ground I wouldn't think it'd be on own soil well definitely um, not so yeah, I think we've we've come up, we've overcome the hardest game in Italy away, which were a bit of a counter really in the end. They put a bit of pressure on in the end, but nothing really to write home about. Obviously Maguire again giving away a mistake for that goal, just not at it at all. Don't know why he's still being selected there. I'm trying not to be too negative because you know it's it is easy to fall down that rabbit hole, but. I, I just can't see why. Yeah, mate, there were a couple of players that we didn't think should have been selected in that side. Calvin Phillips for another. Calvin Phillips. And he played, what, did he play the full game? I think. He, played he played more, more, ga- more, minutes, more minutes in that minutes. game against Italy than he did in the Premier League so yeah, far this season. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, isn't it? That should never be a start, especially when you're over off halfway through a Premier League season. He, he shouldn't be starting. He shouldn't have probably been picked. There's got to have been another centre midfielder that's played more football than him at that point. But there we go. Um, I know Southgate did have a dig at... Um, a couple of the Premier League managers for not playing as many as the English players before this squad selection this time around, saying that the percentage of English starting players in the Premier League has decreased over the last couple of years. <laughs> but you can't blame, I don't think you can blame managers for that. It means that English players have not been good enough to play. I was going to say, you're absolutely right. They're going to prioritise league over Why would they prioritise? Yeah, why would they prioritise England? But that brings us nicely on to what Gem's been saying for ages, and I think we've all kind of backed him in the fact that Tamori needs to be in that side. And if Maguire's not playing, 
and there's not enough English mm-hmm. players in the Premier League playing. Look abroad. Jude Bellingham's coming. He's not playing in England at the moment. Tomorrow's another one. Why not? Yeah. Does Gareth Southgate well. thinks Serie A is on Netflix? <laughs> Oh, uh, just a, a little point, not that it matters for anything, but just as a little tidbit, a little bit of closure. Um, you're right, where the Ukraine-England game will be played or, or any of the home games during this qualification period, for, as a matter of fact, has been announced. However, um, since the war started, they've been playing their home games in Poland um, across a, a couple of different stadiums. So probably the most likely location for that. Next uh, door, isn't it? Yeah, for, for the home qualifying games. Mm. Yeah, should uh, shouldn't be too much of a task, I don't think, for uh, for our boys. We've got the talent that should should beat them. I seem Tim Shea would say on um, I think Talk Sport earlier that um, I think any manager in the upcoming Euros would prefer to have the England squad over their squad, which was quite an interesting statement. It, mate, we we said it before. The squad itself is absolutely phenomenal, which is why it's so frustrating the the tactical side of it, or the lack of urgency, or the hesitancy in pulling the trigger when it comes to subs. We know what we've got on paper. It's it's a top three squad in the world, I think. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> I have to agree. Uh, lads, that is all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure with the, uh, to a certain extent, it's been a pleasure with bringing in and ushering in the new era of Loaded Sport. We got through it, boys. We got through it. Well done, all. Okay, I'm not sure about Aggie's voice. I'm not sure if that's got through it, but uh, hopefully a little bit better next week, lads. I won't be here next week. I'm I'm away because it's off term. So uh, carry the flag. Hopefully, uh, Sam don't put you off too much with his. Uh, he knows what he's doing. But pleasure I'm seeing sure, you all. I'm sure he won't. I'm sure he won't. But Dawson, <laughs> yeah. just before you do sign off for a couple of weeks, uh, tell yes, everybody I... where they can find us on social media. They can find us, Thomas Kemp, a.k.a. Kempy, a.k.a. host and owner of Kempy's Combat Corner Trademarked. Thank you very much. You can find us by searching Loaded Sport on Facebook. If you want to join our community forum, it is a private group. Just request to join and one of us will add you in. It is Loaded Sport Community Forum. If you want to follow us on TikTok and see great clips and content, we, we're averaging over 1,500 views um, per upload of a clip of our podcast which I think is great considering our relative um, sort of um, I can't think of the word but we've not been going for too long yeah obscurity we'll go with that um, is at Loaded Sport same for Twitter as well if you want to follow that page at Loaded Sport if you want to follow us on Instagram I know I always get this wrong but it's at Loaded Undersport there we go (laughs) (laughs) I I called it at Loaded Underscore Sport Um, and most importantly if you want to listen to us it's Loaded Sport on Spotify. And if from now, from this episode, you want to watch us, it is Loaded Sport. Also on YouTube, make sure that you hit like, make sure you hit follow, subscribe, any of the things that you can do on either of those websites or platforms to make sure that you are seeing the latest and viewing the latest, whether it's content, news or anything else, as we continue our growth and move into the business end of the season. And Aggie, as of Monday, it is draft month, baby. It is. So a lot of uh, the last couple of trades that we can uh, kind of muster up and figure out what's going on in Green Bay across to New York. We'll find out exactly what's going on almost at the same time as uh, as everyone else seemingly as well. And of course, uh, build up to uh, the draft taking place around a month away. Month. Month. A month away. Enjoy your night.